Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Ghalibiya Palace. The cabinet commended the outcomes of the Jeddah Security and Development Summit in which a delegation from Bahrain led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa participated. The cabinet noted Saudi Arabia's efforts led by the custodian of the two holy mosques King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud and the Crown Prince Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud in ensuring the success of the summit, which aims to enhance regional and global security and development. The cabinet highlighted the importance of the address given by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa at the summit, in which His Majesty stressed Bahrain's commitment to further strengthening cooperation with its allies to consolidate regional and international peace and stability, as well as achieve sustainable development for all. The cabinet noted the importance of the summit in advancing joint cooperation and commended the summit's final uh, communique which affirmed the strategic partnership between the GCC and the U.S. to achieve peace development and joint uh, cooperation to tackle various challenges. The cabinet expresses thanks to the Minister of Interior and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for their efforts which were instrumental in securing Bahrain's membership in the Global Entry Partnership, facilitating the entry of Bahraini citizens to the USA through the completion of travel procedures for Bahrainis in advance. The cabinet noted the outcomes of the Minister of Interior's visit to the USA, which has further strengthened the Bahrain-U.S. cooperation across security and travel facilitations. In response to the World Health Organization's report documenting Bahrain's comprehensive response to COVID-19, the cabinet commended Team Bahrain's efforts in combating the global pandemic, which has made Bahrain a success model globally with best practices for overcoming critical health challenges. The cabinet extended gratitude to Saudi Arabia for the measures provided to ensure the health and safety of Bahraini pilgrims during the Hajj season. The cabinet offered its condolences over the demise of the former Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, recalling the late Prime Minister's virtues and contributions to the service of his country and people, and his prominent role in strengthening the long-standing relations and cooperation between Bahrain and Japan. The cabinet discussed and approved several memorandums during the meeting with the following outcomes. A memorandum by the Civil Service Council on a number of initiatives to increase the efficiency and productivity of the public sector workforce. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft cooperation agreement between the Government of Bahrain and the Government of Saudi Arabia in the energy sector. The memorandum aims to further strengthen bilateral relations and develop the capabilities of various energy sectors. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the Government's response to four proposals and three law proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. Eighth, the Cabinet noted the ministerial reports regarding the Jeddah Security and Development Summit participation in the International Ministerial Conference on Freedom of Religion of or Belief, participation in the United Nations Conference to support the implementation of Sustainable Development Goal 14, and participation in the high-level political forum on sustainable development of the United Nations Economic and Social Council. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Chairman of the Bahraini Journalist Association, Isa Al Shaiji, and its board members at Ghadibiya Palace. His Royal Highness emphasized the important role played by journalists in promoting Bahrain's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He highlighted the local press efforts to raising the community's awareness and promoting the aspirations and opinions of the community on various sectors, as well as supporting Team Bahrain's continuous efforts in achieving national developmental goals. His Royal Highness commended the contributions of the local press and the national media in upholding impartiality, credibility and transparency, which are the core principles that support the Kingdom's progress and development. He noted that journalists play a vital role within Team Bahrain and stressed that the Kingdom continues to improve its competitiveness through the press efforts in highlighting Bahrain's achievements. 
For his part, the chairman of the Bahraini Journalists Association expresses gratitude for His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's support to the local media and press, which affirms and strengthens its role in society within the kingdom's comprehensive development. The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Infrastructure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Al Malki, and the Minister of Information Affairs, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Al Naimi, also attended the meeting. The Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunication announced that the uh, popular Royal Air Force aerobatic team, the Red Arrows, will perform at the Bahrain International Air Show for the first time in its 10-year history. The announcement was made as the UK Defence uh, Senior Advisor to the Middle East, Air Marshal Sami Sampson, met with the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohammed Al Kabi, the personal representative of His Majesty the King and Chairman of the Supreme Organizing Committee of BIAS, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al. Khalifa expresses pleasure to welcome the Red Arrows to the air show this year, which marks 10 years of success in bringing some of the top global players and flying teams to Bahrain. He added that it is yet another successful outcome of Bahrain's long-standing relationship with the UK. UK Secretary of State for Defense Ben Wallace has stated that the UK has enjoyed a long and prosperous partnership with Bahrain. Mr. al Kabi, Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, affirmed that the air displays at Bahrain International Air Show are one of its main features, stressing that the Red Arrows will add significant value to the flying display program. I'm delighted to announce that this year we will be participating at the Bahrain International Air Show. For us, the first ever time. We cannot wait to come and travel to the region to continue to build the UK and Bahraini relationships and indeed to perform a Red Arrows display in front of the thousands of people that will come and see all of the participants. We look forward to seeing you there. The Speaker of the Representatives Council of Hosea Zaina received the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Parliament Affairs, Ghanem bin Fadl Al Bouainin. Zaina praised the speech of His Majesty the King during the Jeddah Summit for Security and Development, hailing the government's keenness under the directive of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to inform the legislative authority on the results of the Jeddah Summit for Security and Development to promote effective cooperation for the interests of the country and its citizens. The Representatives Council was briefed on the results of the Jeddah Summit for Security and Development. The Speaker stressed that the Legislative Authority supports all Bahrain's actions that strengthen the historical strategic relations with the U.S. and the countries of the region. She affirmed the Parliament's aspirations to enhance the level of joint cooperation and coordination with the government in order to achieve national goals, maximize achievements and overcome challenges. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, speaker of the Shura Council, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Parliament Affairs, Ghanem bin Fadl Al Bouainin, where the results of the Jeddah Summit for Security and Development were reviewed and its topics of political security and economic field were discussed. Al Saleh affirmed that the legislative authority is an essential partner and supporter of all the noble national efforts and endeavors made by the kingdom. Under the the leadership of His Majesty the King. Al Saleh noted the vital role played by the Legislative Authority and its contributions to supporting the performance of the Executive Authority led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in taking all necessary supportive measures to maintain security at the regional and international levels. Al Saleh also hailed His Majesty's participation and speech during the Jeddah Summit for Security and Development. He expressed the Council's interest in following up on all political security and economic development in the regional and international arenas. A governmental parliamentary meeting was held to discuss the outcomes of the Jeddah Summit for Security and Development. In the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, the Minister of Parliamentary Affairs, and the heads and members of the Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committees of the Shura and Representatives Councils. The Minister of Foreign Affairs praised the effective partnership between the legislative and executive authorities in promoting the development and democratic process and supporting the foreign policy objectives of Bahrain and its strategic interest in consolidating regional and 
international security and peace. In light of His Majesty the King's approach and the policy of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister. He briefed the members of the Legislative Authority on the results of His Majesty the King's participation in the Jeddah Summit for Security and Development, hailing the royal speech and the high values it conveyed and wise diplomatic principles that affirm Bahrain's keenness to unify the Arab ranks in partnership with allied and friendly countries towards a comprehensive and just peaceful settlement of regional and international conflicts, foremost of which is the establishment of an independent Palestinian state in accordance with the two-state solution and the Arab Peace Initiative, the resolution of the Yemeni crisis and collective action for peace, security and development. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Bit Ahmed Armehi, conducted an inspection visit to Selman Town. The minister affirmed providing innovative and immediate housing solutions that contribute to rapid response to housing demands of citizens and enhancing the successful partnership with the private sector in preparation for its introduction during the next phase in line with government program and Bahrain's economic vision 2030. She was briefed on the completion of a number of projects in the city, including the implementation of 303 housing units, residential building projects and the lands allocated to the government land right development program project. Armehi indicated that construction is proceeding at an accelerated pace and according to schedule, noting that completion rates will be fully completed during the last quarter of this year. She also added that Salman Town is currently witnessing pro progress in the construction of residential buildings that serve more than 1,380 Bahraini families. In the presence of the Secretary General of the Higher Education Council and Deputy Chairperson of the Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council, Sheikh Dr. Rana bint Isa bint Ej Al Khalifa, the Gulf University organized a celebration on the occasion of the inauguration of the College of Communication and Media Technologies and the College of Law. Sheikh Dr. Rana delivered a speech during the ceremony in which she noted that higher education and scientific research have an important role in the economy and in the lives of societies in all fields. She stressed that with the inauguration of the College of Communication and Media Technologies at the Gulf University, students will have ideal opportunities from the available specializations to develop their skills and achieve integrated communication in its personal and media aspects. She added that with the reopening of the College of Law, the Gulf University seeks to prepare distinguished legal caters to work in the various fields of law by providing distinguished legal education. Bahrain's ambassador to the U.S., Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, attended the Global Entry Program launch ceremony at the Customs and Border Protection Headquarters in Washington, D.C. The ambassador emphasized that joining the program is an international achievement for Bahrain and will further facilitate travel for Bahrainis to the U.S. Sheikh Abdullah said that this step is evidence of the ongoing and long-term cooperation in security and economic affairs, noting that it also reflects the dedication of both countries to further strengthening bilateral relations and facilitating commerce, tourism, and people-to-people -people initiatives, as well as solidifying efforts to ensure the security of both countries' borders. He said that the program will grant Bahrainis expedited clearance upon arrival in the U.S. through the use of kiosks strategically placed in numerous U.S. airports and at pre-clearance facilities worldwide. The ambassador explained that the global entry program with the kingdom shows other levels of border security implemented to facilitate the lawful travel of Bahrainis to the U.S. The world is truly becoming smaller. Journeyed friends become accessible neighbors. For global entry is a testament to the foundational security, economic, and people-to-people -people relationships that are so strong between our two nations, fostered through mutual respect, trust, and cooperation. These 
planks make up a concrete foundation essential for our tower of friendship and commitment to one another. It not only speaks to the service provided to those in its cradle, but touts key efforts undertaken by the Kingdom of Bahrain as well. Over the past two decades, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has reformed systems in our nation to improve the ease and quality of life for those in our country as well as those who interacted with us. An effort that has and continues to be carried out by His Royal Highness Crown Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Only a couple of months ago, His Royal Highness himself was in Washington, D.C., engaging at the highest levels, assuring our unified front. And just last month, our Minister of Interior, His Excellency General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, was also here meeting with the Department of Homeland Security and specifically with Customs and Border Control. Securing this day and further advancing the synergies between our two nations' security apparatus. But we're here today, and while we're here, we need truly recognize what today is all about. Today is a representation of the relationship and respect that exists between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States. It is a trophy to hang on the mantle that is our bilateral relationship. For today, it is codified the trust we have in one another, the value that our people place in one another, and the importance that our nations hold for one another. So as we clasp one another in friendship, let us acknowledge that we are all only as safe as one another. A vulnerability in one of us is a vulnerability in all of us. But let that be a comfort, not a concern. As we are bound by the common ideals and concerns, we stand firmly, arm in arm, and in doing so, assure a safer position for each other. And so, on behalf of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Your Excellencies, the Minister of Interior <coughs> and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and all the people of Bahrain, I'd like to express a heartfelt appreciation to everyone that has exerted such tremendous effort to make this historic agreement a reality. In closing, I'd like to personally thank our security attaché and his office, our friends and his uh, counterparts in Bahrain, for really following this through. And I'd like to thank the leadership here for making this possible. Sometimes an MOU is just an MOU up until something like today happens. And for more about this, the U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain, Stephen C. Bondi, elaborated on the program and affirmed his delight about the new partnership between the two countries. I'm delighted that the Global Entry Trusted Traveler Program launched July 15 for Bahraini passport holders. This partnership between the U.S. Customs and Border Protection and the government of Bahrain will expedite the entry of pre-approved Bahraini travelers arriving in the United States. Implementation of the Global Entry Program reflects the close partnership the United States and Bahrain share and the interconnectedness we enjoy through international travel. Global Entry will allow pre-approved Bahraini passport holders to skip traditional processing lines at ports of entry, streamlining business travel and tourism, and so further integrating our economies. There is already a lot of excitement about this program. And here are a few important points to remember. All Bahraini travelers must be pre-approved for the Global Entry Program 
and undergo a background check and in-person interview before enrollment. Bahraini passport holders who are pre-approved for global entry will enter the United States through automatic kiosks at airports and other ports of entry. Global entry does not waive the requirement for a visa. All Bahraini nationals who wish to participate in the global entry program must continue to have a valid visa to enter the United States. Global entry is not preclearance to enter the United States at the time of boarding an international flight. The global entry process only takes place at a port of entry inside the United States. The U.S. Embassy in Bahrain is currently working with U.S. Customs and Border Protection to finalize the global entry application and enrollment process for Bahraini nationals. As part of the Bahrain Summer Festival, the Embassy of Korea in Bahrain organizes cultural show Korean History Through Dance and Music. With the participation from Korea, the b-boy dancing crew makers and Korean traditional music artist Kim Yong-jin. These events came as part of the Korean Embassy's cultural programs in the kingdom and were organized collaboratively between the Embassy, the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities and the Korean Foundation in Korea.